Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the second video about discone antennas and this is the second discone antenna that I made for a slightly lower frequency range than the other one. The other one is uh, up there on top of the cupboard. This is um, the first one I made. I made a video about it and uh, the first one um, I wanted to be able to use it 433 megahertz up to 1 gigahertz and um, it's a little bit too small which means that the frequency range was a little bit higher the optimal range um, so I wanted to make another one which I did <clears throat> this one which is a little bit bigger you can't see it but it is a bit bigger and this one uh, goes a bit lower in frequency the actual um, design parameters I put into the calculator on the website which I'll put the link to in the description below um, instead of 350 megahertz minimum frequency I said 321. The reason why it's a funny number with well, the one on the end is because I got some um, brass rods <clears throat> which are 350 millimeters long and um, each rod I sawed into two lengths for the uh, the lower and the upper elements of the antenna and uh, being lazy I only wanted to make one saw cut instead of two so I uh, chose those lengths and played with the numbers until I only had to make one saw cut so um, I've come out with a disc diameter on top of 187 millimeters. The length of the radials or the lower element lengths is 259 millimeters. And uh, this gives a uh, minimum frequency theoretically of 321 megahertz. So it should work nicely at 432. Um, the website tells you an optimum bandwidth. Not quite sure what they mean by optimum, but uh, there it is. And one thing I noticed last time was uh, when soldering the thing together I had to solder these top elements onto a uh, copper disc it's copper not brass because that's what I could find on Amazon and um, it was a bit fiddly and then the center pin from the n-type connector that's under here is also soldered onto this plate and a problem was of course that when you uh, try to solder the center pin the <laughs> brass disc heats up and the elements fall off and vice versa and somebody somewhere suggested using two different types of solder, one um, with lead and one without, and the melting point is something like 30 degrees C difference, which means you can use one solder for one set of elements and the other solder for something else, so that uh, hopefully it doesn't all fall off at the same time. <laughs> I haven't tried that yet, but I'll try that on the next build. Anyway, this is the uh, slightly bigger discone antenna with a um, design minimum frequency 321 megahertz on, on the design website and if we look at the parameters down here sorry about all the different curves and the reflections um, the yellow curve is the SWR and you can see actually I put a marker there that marker number one there is at 420 megahertz and you can see that's where the SWR curve, the yellow curve suddenly comes down to a reasonable value, that's 2, an SWR of 2, at 420 megahertz, which is fine because I want to use it at 433, and then it goes up, it's reasonably flat, not bad for a homemade wideband antenna, that's up to 1 gigahertz, so 420 megs to 1 gigahertz is fairly consistent. The um, ripples in the curve are probably caused more by the cable that's in use than the antenna itself. I've noticed this before that these cables introduce a bit of ripple depending on the quality and this is not the best quality cable by any means so <clears throat> the SWR looks very usable and then the blue curve the S21 curve is the loss um, between the ports the port number one is connected to this antenna here <clears throat> near me the other port goes along this piece of coax cable which is fairly low loss for what it is to the other antenna and it's connected to the other discone antenna there and the loss in the cable has been calibrated out on the analyzer which I showed in a previous video because it does of course have its own loss of about 1 or 1.5 dBs um, increasing with frequency so that's been calibrated out to give a straight line on the analyzer when it's plugged into here the other end so what we're seeing here is the insertion loss between the two antennas or the path loss and this is 10 dBs per division from here, so it's 10, 20, 30, 40 dBs down is the loss between 400 and something megs and 1 gigahertz. It's around 40 dBs. Um, if I carefully pick all this up, 
<laughs> and take it closer to the other antenna, then we'll be able to see that the loss is de decreasing, the blue line is moving up. And as we get closer and closer, two antennas now are very close together, and the path loss between them is around 20 dBs over that working frequency range, and it's relatively flat. So that's 20 dBs, 30 dBs, now I'm about uh, 1.5 meters away. And then the average of 40 dBs, where are we at? 10, 20, 30, so a bit further is 40. So that's about three meters away. So as you can see, the, the antennas work, as you might expect, and I'm going to use them in my next experiment for testing antennas for mesh-tastic. So let's put this all down again. And if you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading those in the comments section. And please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching.